How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sunday is with Andrew Zarian. And man, what is Saturday and Sunday it's going to be, and Friday, and Thursday, and today. It's Wednesday on this show, and yet that means it is Wednesday of WrestleMania week. And we got a lot to talk about. Last night, NXT, the go-home NXT show for Stand and Deliver. And, you know, sometimes I've noticed, sometimes it's a go-home show, and uh, you just knock it out of the park. A great example, I thought the Raw go-home angle on Monday with The Rock and Roman Reigns and Cody and Seth, that was a great angle. Great angle. And then I watched NXT, and it was like, should have just uh, I don't know what they should have done, but last week was way better than this week. So we'll talk about the show, some notes from the show. We've also got Dynamite coming up tonight, and uh, many, many things announced for Dynamite, including an Adam Copeland promo and a Brian Danielson match announced today. So uh, if you're in the area, grab those tickets if you want to see Brian Danielson. He's wrestling tonight. And we've got... SmackDown, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, Ring of Honor this weekend, Stand and Deliver, Night 1 and 2 of Mania, and uh, plenty more. Also, Drew Gulak and Ronda Rousey. We'll talk about that story. The Raw ratings for Monday. Big E discusses whether or not he's coming back to wrestling. WWE has a new energy drink partner, which is uh, not Logan Paul's company. Got Julia heading to the U.S., the New Japan G1 tournament schedule, and plenty more. If you want Texas, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Welcome to the special tour of Figure Four Weekly Headquarters, as promised. Today I will be accompanied by my assistant Vincenzo, so let's get moving. Hey, don't worry about it. Today's a special day, I'll drive. Today's going to be a good day, so let's not F anything up, okay? Now, I'd like to tell everybody, I just want to give a short speech on the way to uh, the compound here today, and that is that we are going through very tough economic times right now. Right, Vince? It's a time of uh, stock market crashing, the yen is devalued, a time of woe and want. and. Many of you watching this right now, for all I know, are unemployed. But the good thing is, and I always like to look on the bright side, as Vince is well aware, the good news is that for every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is that Figure Four Weekly is doing great. It's a huge success right now. Subscriptions are up, quality is down, Profit margins are skyrocketing. Things are going very well. So the one thing is that I don't want to make it seem like money is everything because money cannot buy happiness. But what it can buy is enormous houses. And that makes me happy. So we will be going to see my enormous house, the Figure Four Weekly Compound. And uh, that's where we're heading right now.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semperbibi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. One of those days. One of those weeks. Yeah, it is. It's one of those weeks where I have a giant list of things to talk about, and I'm already behind. Cody, apparently on the MMA hour today. Guess it just happened. And I'm going to have to listen to that, see what he talked about there, and uh, everything else. Yeah, Janelle Grant's lawyer on uh, post wrestling, uh, Brandon Thurston and John Pollock. Uh, Is that happened or going to happen? Uh, that is actually, I can't, well, look, it's actually, it's airing right now. Oh. I believe it is. That's a debuted at stream now. So that is going to be newsworthy tonight for you and Dave after the AEW show. Surely Ann Callis is her name. We obviously have the Ronda Rousey story. This fallout from CM Punk still, it's a lot of, I can't wait till all the shows really kick off in mass tomorrow because we have talked about everything other than what has been taking place in the ring on this WrestleMania week. Well, we do have uh, blood sports starting tomorrow. I thought that was Friday. Turns out it's Thursday afternoon. Yeah. So I'm going to figure out a way to watch that. And NXT is Saturday. I think I miss... Uh, is it? Or, or no, it's Friday. That's what I keep saying. NXT Saturday. is Friday? It's Friday, I believe. Hold on, let me see. No, it's, it's not Friday. This is crazy. It's Sunday morning. I messed it up. It's Sunday morning. Saturday yes. morning? Saturday morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning? Is this that hard? Yes. Why don't you look up when everything is? Without cage match open, which I now have open. <laughs> so, yeah. Barnett's blood sport tomorrow. DDT. Uh, the the Dean Rasmussen. Uh, and I know just butchered his name. The That show. The action show. The Hitchcock Memorial is tomorrow. So. Corey says it's uh, Saturday. Yeah, the hell Friday. day is this NXT show? It's not Friday. Friday is the uh, the Hall of Fame. And SmackDown. It is Saturday. Thank you. NXT is, is on Saturday. Saturday morning. Exactly what I thought. Going head up with Effie's Big Gay Brunch. Drew Gulak has responded to Ronda Rousey's allegations that he inappropriately pulled on her pant drawstrings backstage at a WWE event. During an appearance on News Nation on Tuesday, Rousey said she was waiting to speak with Triple H outside a WWE writer's room. When someone grabbed the string of her sweatpants before walking away, she would later identify this person as Gulak. She said, I was standing there, and this guy I was barely an acquaintance with grabs the strings of my sweatpants as I'm walking by. And nobody reacts as if this is abnormal. And he's going down the hall, and I'm like, what the F is that? Why are you grabbing the string of my sweatpants? If my husband was standing there next to me, would you feel comfortable walking up to me and grabbing the string of my sweatpants? I just want to interject here to say that, forget her husband. Who in the world? Anyway, Ronda Rousey? So she says he did that. All the guys around me were like, this is part of the day. And if this guy was coming up to me and doing this kind of stuff to me when there are other people around, what's happening to these other girls when I'm not in the hallway? So Gulak then went on X. And he said, backstage at a WWE event in 2022, I saw Ronda talking with a group in the hallway. I stopped to say hi and shake all of their hands. And in an attempt to shake her hand, I accidentally touched her drawstring. Complete accident and one that I had apologized to her for the mishap. Rousey later said she confronted Gulak after the incident. She continued, I was like, if I ever hear you putting your hands on any other woman like this or doing anything to me like this ever again, we're going to have a problem. And he was like, no, no, no. I'm glad you said something to me. He backpedaled. But it put a sour taste in my mouth about the culture there, what's considered acceptable, and how to touch and treat the women in the hallways. So that's her side, and that's his side. And when this came out yesterday, I know there were people there that thought, I don't know if Gulag's going to uh, make the day. But uh, so far, he has made the day. So day's not over. But uh, that is uh, each side of the story there. They sound like two completely different stories. I mean, they sound like two completely different stories. I was standing there and this guy, barely acquaintance with, grabs the string of my sweatpants as I'm walking by. You know, it, it, I, I don't know. And I just, I'm trying to envision this where she takes that reaction of him trying to, I, I just... 
seems like two completely different stories there. And I, it just, I don't know. <laughs> she said it on News Nation, and this is obviously, again, I, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like his defense. You know, you ever tried to shake hands with somebody and grab their belt, Brian? I mean, that that didn't happen when we shook hands for the first time. You know what I mean? I, I, I got to be honest. There's this sounds like there's something that needs to have like some sort of HR investigation launched and have people that were around talk to about it because that's a heavy thing to put on the sleeve of his jacket walking around backstage. Is this? You know what I mean? Uh, I to me that's. If I'm him, I better have a better defense than what he tweeted out because she's Ronda Rousey and she said what she said on TV and is, I'm sure, telling her absolute truth. So I, I don't know. What do you think? That well, seems to I, be, I, you know. I mean, all I know is like what actual what is she saying actually happened? Is she talking about like he stuck his hand into the waistband? Or is she saying that, like, the string in the front of your sweatpants that hangs down that you're supposed to tie was just hanging down? But even like, in that case, Brian, well, I'll just if you say think this. about it, that's it, not good. Uh, well, of course it's not. I'm just saying, like, his claim is it was an accident, okay? If her string was uh, hanging down and he accidentally c- caught it, that's at least, okay, I could see that could happen in infinite universes. But if she's saying that he went to shake her hand and his hand went in the front band of her sweatpants, how does that even happen? How? So, I don't know. I know you're either you're either coming up way from way too low with that or I don't know, you know, what you're doing there. You know, coming in well, my point way is, too I, down. I can you know. I'll just put it this way. If you're talking about the the long string that hangs down in front of your sweatpants if you've not tied them yet, yes, I can see that getting caught in something. But I can't How? see the I can't see the band of your sweatpants I being caught in anything. That's I I haven't seen anybody you know, rocking the big loop out of the sweatpants in a long long time. I guess if there's somebody well, still out there. Usually, you know, you got real short now. That's, you know, come on. I'm just telling you, dude, you asked me. I don't know I, what happened. I wasn't there. I know. I mean, I'm I I'm still got a better, Look, I I'm sure this sounds like it's going to need to be cleared up. Well, of course. We have got the Dynamite show tonight where today they added today they added, Brian Danielson wrestling. He will be facing Lance Archer. And Adam Copeland is on the show. I think maybe they should have announced that a little earlier, but I think so. I just know. me. Yeah. Uh, Samoa Joe and Swerve have their contract signing. It is the Young Bucks versus the Best Friends Tag Team Title Tournament semifinal match. It is Mariah May and Thunder Rosa. It is Brian Danielson and Lance Archer is noted. Chris Jericho will call out Hook. I still have no idea what that means, based on the storyline. Will Ospreay versus Powerhouse Hobbs in the Battle of Wills. And I still cannot believe this match is occurring. Switchblade Jay White versus Mr. Ass in a one-on-one singles match is happening tonight on AW Dynamite. King Ass, William Gunn. So, uh, huh. And then uh, we got Rampage. Actually, I believe that... Um, Collision being taped tonight. Well, yeah, Rampage. Or whatever it is. I don't know what they're doing. But they are featuring a uh, Collision yes. taping, which will air after Dynamite. There so is. we'll have the uh, the full Collision lineup for sure uh, tomorrow. And then that show airs at, what, 11.30, I believe, this weekend. Actually, uh, it's not the after. worst time at all. It's It's airing after WrestleMania. So, uh, honestly, I mean, it depends on if WrestleMania wears people out. But if you're, uh, if you're watching WrestleMania and you still want a little more wrestling, yeah, but, but you can tune on, in Ryan. for Collision. The Cluster F is going on. Joey Janela's uh, spring break. Well, come yeah. On. What are you, you going to choose? How many people are in that cluster? 78? <laughs> no, seriously, a, I'm not even making that up. It's going it, to be a spectacle. It's like folks. 78 or 87 people. It's completely ridiculous. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm excellent, Brene. I'm you excellent. Bet. Yep. Uh, very excited that you're able to join us here tonight. Congratulations on retaining the AEW World Championship in such an incredible match with Hangman Adam Page, Swerve Strickland. You guys beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. 
Should I ask you if you're even remotely surprised that you are still our champion tonight? Not at all. Um, you know, I've always made it a, a point to, uh, you know, tell the world what I'm going to do, and I think that I've delivered uh, on every uh, promise that I've made here in AEW. Uh, and tonight was no different. You know, obviously, Swerve and Hangman, two tremendous young competitors, but they just didn't have enough, and I'm just that much better. So here I am, the champion. All right, guys, the floor is open to you guys. Any uh, questions you guys have for Samoa Joe, it's all you. Take the first one right here, Joe. Thanks for your time, Joe. My name is Jonathan McClarty from flagshipnews.com and naturenews.com. Uh, congratulations on your victory tonight. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, you know, with Hangman and Swerve beefing with each other for so long, do you think that served as a distraction to, to further help you to retain tonight? Well, you know, first off, I want to thank your readers for their service. Secondly, um, you know, it was a huge mistake by both those gentlemen. I mean, obviously, they have very, very bad blood between each other. So, you know, these uh, heated issues can often boil over into other parts of their life. Unfortunately, it boiled over tonight, which is the worst place for it to happen. So, I mean, if uh, those gentlemen want to stay uh, eyes locked on each other, they thought that the path to salvation was through uh, each other's blood. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't because uh, I made sure that did not happen tonight. So, that's what I feel. Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio. So you talked earlier a couple of weeks ago about bringing back the ranking system as a way to get the best opponents for the AEW World Championship. Today we saw an amazing match, one that you were a part of, and also Will Ospreay and Takeshita. What are your thoughts on the growing, strong talent pool in All Elite Wrestling and what it means to be world champion during this time with so much talent. I mean, it's indicative of what AEW has always stood for. You know, we go out, we find the best wrestlers in the world, and we bring them together to find out who is the best wrestler in the world. Currently, that is me. But on my heels are some of the greatest grapplers to ever step foot in a ring. You know, when we have acquisitions, men like Will Ospreay, how can you not be excited about the future of this company? And, uh, you know, once again, we've set up a protocol. Will Osprey is new here. He's a fantastic, dynamic athlete, has had tremendous success everywhere he's been. But until he has that success here, I don't need to worry about him. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. 88 people in the cluster. 88. <laughs> Even WCW, when they had that three-ring that three ring World War III Battle Royal, I think it was still only 60. 60, yeah. 88 people. 88. 88. And you know what? I will say one thing about 88 people. What's that? Uh, Makes for a hell of a party. No. It is a cluster. And uh, I pray to God nobody gets hurt. Because even back in the day, you know, this is certainly not the case anymore. But, you know, Tim Flowers used to run these battle royals. And it would always open the show. Battle royal, winner gets Tim in the main event. And there's only like, you know, 20 geeks in the ring. But man, if you did a spot or took a bump in the battle royal, he would he'd get that cane, wouldn't get in well. Because there's twenty people in a twenty by twenty ring. You can't be taking bumps, you're gonna land on somebody, you're gonna trip over somebody, you're gonna get hurt. So uh eighty eight people yeah. in this cluster. Be careful, well, everybody. I don't know if everybody's going to be in there all at the same time. We'll see. Yeah, how is this going to work? I would think there's going to be, you know, staggered entries and out outages. However, that uh, eliminations, I guess I should say. I'm just hoping Omas shows up. 
I mean, that's really what I want after this weekend. Two days of this Joey Janela spring break and these zillion other shows. I know I'm not going to get Omas against Filthy Tom Lawler on Bloodsport. I'm actually very upset about that, but... I need to see, as uh, the trade-off here of Shayna Baszler being on blood support, why not Omas in this in this cluster? We've got uh, a couple of other shows to talk about. SmackDown has the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, Jey Uso versus Solo Sokoa, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, Zelina Vega versus Electra Lopez, and the KO show with... Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. So I guess we should look at who's in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal because I think there's 20 people. Bronson and, Reed is one. We determined that yesterday. Yeah, we certainly know that, brother. All right, so uh, here is the lineup for this uh, Andre Battle Royal. Like, are we ever going to – Is it? why is this so hard? Okay, forget it. doesn't matter. I thought maybe, you know, Wikipedia might have a list of guys, but no, nah, we got to make it as difficult as possible. I have to search the internet, find out the guys. Hold on. And does it matter? If no, you look for it. it. Yeah. All right. Well, then we've got uh, Stand and Deliver, which had some changes after the NXT show last night, some additions. Truck Williams, Carmelo Hayes. Halia Dragunov versus Tony D. Lyra Valkyra against Roxanne Perez. By the grace of the good Lord above, it is Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier. I'm telling you, it's going to steal the show this weekend. It's going to steal the weekend, potentially. Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. It's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, everybody, this match is going to be on fire. Yes, it is on my site, but I don't want to sit here searching my website when I'm live on the air. I've got it right here. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Obafemi versus Dijak and Josh Briggs, triple threat match. Thea Hale, Kalani Jordan, and Fallon Henley versus JC Jane, Kiana James, and Izzy Dame. Can I read these names again? Thea Hale, Kalani Jordan, and Fallon Henley versus, I swear to you, JC Jane, Kiana James, and Izzy Dame. <laughs> Just wait till Julia debuts as Juju. With. I forgot her name. <laughs> Whatever Nick's. What's her first name? Oh, Stevie. No, it's not, you idiot. <laughs> Jasmine. Jasmine Nix. J A Z M Y N N Y X. Could not make this up. There was well, one week she was out there dressed like TLC in the creep video, and I still cannot really figure out why. It's just like I, I can't figure out anything like, on the show. Here are characters just get thrown at you. In I NXT. cannot figure this show out. Sean Spears and Joe Gacy, and and there will be a mystery person sitting in the crowd. Who could that person be? Who could it be? I'm Very just going to do a couple sad. of NXT notes now to not waste time later. Right. I only have a few things to say. Number one. There was a very scary moment with Oba Femi. And it's interesting because he does that move where he picks him up for a back suplex and then he tosses him. And uh, that's a scary move because you got to put him down perfectly flat. And he's never screwed it up. And that's pretty good for a guy who's brand new. He's hit it perfectly every time. So he's wrestling Joe Gacy. And he picks him up and he starts to toss him. And... You know, Joe Gacy starts flying through the air, and he's not totally flat. So, you know, Joe Gacy, whatever you want to say about his character, and I will say that it sucks, and he's never had a good character ever in NXT. He's a good worker. And so he's kind of like going to land kind of on his butt, his buttocks, which is not how you want to land. And so in midair, he kind of leans back, and he freaking landed perfect. Perfect, it looked like. So he's down, and Oba Femi is like, ah, he's going to hit him with a big move. But the guy didn't get up. So Oba goes over to lift him up, and then, you know, he walks, kind of steps back a little bit. The ref says, back up, back up, back up. The ref checks on Joe Gacy, and then dreaded X. And man, oh man, 
you know, the crowd had been chanting for Oba Femi. They do that Oba chant. Soon as that ref held up that X, they went dead quiet. And they had a shot of Oba Femi. This guy was so sad. I mean, he totally broke character. He looked like his dog died. He was so sad. And the ref comes over and he like, you know, hold up the belt or whatever. And, you know, kind of holds up the belt for a second. And, he, and so he leaves. And, you know, they tended to Joe Gacy for a while. And they were actually supposed to shoot an angle for the three-way. They were going to get Dijak out there and Josh Briggs. But they had to get the medical team in to check on Joe Gacy. So they just cut away. And they kind of did it backstage later. But Joe Gacy, he managed to get up. And he got backstage. And they must have, like, determined immediately that, okay, we were playing it safe, but he's fine. Because they announced Sean Spears and Joe Gacy for the pre-show. So apparently the guy's fine. But, man, that was scary. That was scary. Can you make the Oba Femi growl again? No. Oh, I can't. okay. I cannot well, do it know, when provoked. And I don't know if, you know, it's, you had to say it's like his dog died. It was like, man, I hope this dude just didn't break his neck. That's the, that's the look. Well, yeah, but he was so he sad and, like, he was just, he was so sad. And, uh, well, you know, thank God everybody's all right. Not only all right, but apparently fine. You're not going to book a guy for the pre-show in two days if there's no. any concern whatsoever about, especially, especially now nowadays in WWE. They yeah. play it very safe. It's a pre-show against Sean Spears, and nothing against any of that. And obviously, they would rather be the pre-show on Mania than the main event on NXT the next week, I would assume. But still, you know, it, it, I don't know. It's obviously he's fine, and God knows in CZW he took some he took some bounces. That's for sure. And you know, I don't want to bring it up again. Uh huh. Okay, but I will just say now that we've seen the go home angle for the World Heavyweight Championship match at NXT, Stand and Deliver. Yes. Listen, I love Ilya Dragunov. Okay, love the guy. He's great. I'm a huge fan of Tony D. He's going to be a big star. He plays a goofy character so well. This was. The lamest build for a world title match. I may have to go back decades. NXT Big Show history, that's No, sure. I'm not talking NXT. I'm Ever. talking WWE when Vince was in charge and he was just completely incompetent. I'm talking and I'm talking uh um TNA, AW. I have never I, I you'd probably have to go back to like, I don't know. You know, Jericho with the dog and Stephanie and Triple H. Oh, my and God. And that was probably oh. better. I mean, this was the bottom of the barrel, dirt worst build for a world title match I ever saw. And then, and then it gets even better. We've been asking over and over, why isn't Trick and Mellow for the title? Okay, it's not. Why doesn't he even have a stip? Okay. Do you know what Ava said on the show yesterday? What's that? She actually said... I've asked the ref to show some leniency. We've got to have a winner in this match. <laughs> I'm like, you're the GM. You literally signed a match from Gorilla on this show. And like, you can't even sign a, you can't even say it's a no DQ match. We have to have a winner. You can't say it's a lights out match. You can't say whatever. What you say is, I've talked to the ref and asked for a little leniency because we must have a winner. Sometimes I think that they troll me, like me. Okay, why me? Because like CM Punk, I'm always the victim. But also because they know that nobody in wrestling reporting, nobody in this job, this this distinguished journalism job. Nobody <laughs> likes NXT television more than me. So they troll me because every now and then they just want to see me get really mad about something. And this is it. Well, Brian, what did you want? Continental Classic rules? Back in a moment, Observer Live.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Just been told the WrestleMania 2025 location will be announced this week. Video mm-hmm. package is done, and uh, we'll see if it's on uh, first night of WrestleMania or outside of WrestleMania, but we will have that anytime now. Man, does Minnesota want that. Minneapolis really would love to have that. Would you be able to to handle the cold that could possibly happen in April if there's snow in Minneapolis, Brian? Would you go to WrestleMania? Same thing if it was Chicago. Would you go to WrestleMania if there's the possibility of snow in April for you? Here's the thing. There's a possibility of snow in April here. I know. That's thing. what I'm saying. You want to travel into that at your, uh, at your temperament at this point in life? Here's the other thing, everybody. I like to address... My critics. I don't know why I bother. <laughs> How come you guys always do stuff around uh, AW pay-per-views and not WWE? You know how many times I've heard that in my life? Mm-hmm. Brothers? Guess, guess sometimes. From about uh, 2006 until about, well, the New York, New Jersey WrestleMania. I went to every single WrestleMania. And yes, we do our convention built around the AW Memorial Day pay-per-views. But that is because there is now an AW pay-per-view over Memorial Day. You guys forget, we used to do that for UFC. In the July. convention was always built around the UFC, either the July UFC or the Memorial Day UFC. I am very torn about this year's WrestleMania. I shouldn't even say I'm torn, okay? Huh. I really would like to go to WrestleMania Live this year. And as I mentioned on another show, what happened, one of the things that happened was, you know, we wanted to do a live Q&A and a bunch of other stuff with Dave in Philadelphia, and he wasn't going to go. And so the other issue is my kid's spring break, for reasons I cannot explain, starts Monday. I'm like, what? What? They didn't give them Good Friday or Friday it, off? It's of usually yeah. like the second or third week of. You know, what it usually was was, you know, we would I'd come back from Mania, and then the following week uh, we would have spring break. This well, is all Easter dependent, Brian. Well, whatever it is, I mean, it's irritating because <laughs> they've got a spring break planned in uh, the Bay Area and the Redwoods. And so they're literally leaving on Friday. I'm going to stay here for Mania weekend. And then I got to get to the Redwoods on Monday. <laughs> Brian Alvarez, angered by resurrection. Somebody report. That. I'm not angered by the resurrection. <laughs> I'll be angered if I'm not resurrected. But the point is, I uh, it just how, was. How can you kill an immortal? It was very, very. It just wasn't going to work. And here's the other thing too. I got lots of plans for this weekend now. All right. I mean, the family's who's, gone. Who's coming over? I don't gotta. I don't gotta go play with anybody. I don't gotta unless you want to. You can you know, take anybody to there. whatever jumpy place. Nothing. Don't gotta put kids to bed. Don't gotta walk in there eighty five times when they wake up for something ridiculous. They're gone. Yeah, but you gotta deal with Vinny. And so, like Vinny and I are I mean, we're moving in, brother. We're gonna watch everything that we can. And we're we're gonna do multiple shows. And you know, when I really think about, like, all the stuff I, I'll be able to watch and, you know, all of the stuff that we're going to be able to do for subscribers, I mean, honestly, it's better off I'm here. To be honest, on a Mania weekend, I mean, I used to try to go to shows when I went to WrestleMania weekend, but it's like these shows are all over the place. Like, uh, I run to this show. I see the last three matches. I get out and I go to this show. I see the last two matches. I, I zoom over here. I, I just totally missed it. I'd eat something. That's not the problem now. I mean, boom, 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 we're going to watch everything. So I think that, you know, for subscribers, uh, this is going to be far superior. And for non-subscribers, you should sign up because you're going to get your uh, money's worth in a weekend. And then you got the rest of the month. If this goes well, you can put up some more cameras in there. You know, maybe if this is a hit in the future, people over watching from Brian's house. You know, keep Rob outside because that's where he deserves to be. But, you know, maybe make this a thing. Instead of Brian always having to travel out, the party comes to Brian's house. I don't want a party here. I'm a hermit. But I want to watch everything and get this thing done. 
That's how Benny and I get along. We're both hermits. We don't talk. We just quietly watch shows together. We only talk on the air. Works out great. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil all my material outside of on the air. Oh, see, he'll... that's where it's got to be. <laughs> you ever said something really funny and then tried to say it again on a podcast and it's, it's not funny at all? It's got to just. You got one shot. One shot. As Eminem once said. <laughs> Raw on Monday night, 1.78 million viewers and a .59 in 18 to 49. The women's basketball game, college basketball on ESPN, Iowa versus LSU, built around Caitlin Clark. I helped coach her for basketball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for this, everybody? <laughs> women's, women's college basketball? 12.3 million viewers. And 3.08 in 18 to 49. Excuse me, Brian, did you say 3.08? Yes, I did. This uh, this women's college basketball game did NFL numbers on uh, Monday. Yeah. It was the highest number in the history of women's college basketball. And... A similar, if not better, number would be expected on Friday, uh, which uh, will start at 9.30 p.m., that last half hour of, of SmackDown. So uh, whatever you're going to do, get it done early is the point. Uh, Rock doing the first hour with Reigns and Roll- Rollins and the Bloodline. Uh, did 1.95 million viewers and a .65 commercial free. So that's what happens when you go commercial free. We've mentioned it a thousand times. Uh, the last 90 minutes of the show went against a Connecticut USC game, which did 6.72 million and 1.81 in 18 to 49. That's a sh- that's a show that was on at 9:30 to 11. They wanted to see Paige buckets. Good God Almighty, she's good. Knees are all right again. But you know, no one watches television except when there's like a real big game on. <laughs> then they buy TVs and sign up for cable, <laughs> and then they like tear it all down again the next day. You know what the uh, the thing was about that uh, LSU deal with Iowa? It's just good booking is what that was. You had Caitlin Clark. You had Angel Reese. You had Angel Reese playing the heel. You had Caitlin Clark. You had personalities there like the coach of LSU, Kim Mulkey. And I can't remember who said this. You look at both coaches on that team and they had big, can I talk to the manager energy? They absolutely did, but... It was a hell of an atmosphere. Look, I tuned over from Raw. You know, I haven't fallen into the the trap of all the women's college basketball being a big deal this year. I just haven't really watched any of it. But the atmosphere they had going on, it was a close game. It was a good game. And there's individuals there that are treated and have been portrayed in the media like stars. So, you know, so sports is a very simple thing, you know, and, and why the gets the reactions and gets to people in the way that it does you know it's always going to be a timeless simple thing at its core i'll just explain this since some people don't understand what's going on here okay yes all right so let's take every television in the united states that has these channels okay there's not counting people that don't have the channel so for example if you have a a, you know rabbit ears and you only get four five seven nine or whatever eleven thirteen like, if you're one of those people that only has that, or if you don't have a TV, you don't count, okay? Sucks you get but Sinclair, that's all you get. all the people that have access to the channel, and that includes if you've got Sling or if you've got YouTube TV or whatever, all the people in the country that have access to the channel, if Dynamite draws a .11 in 18 to 49, that means of all of those people, .11% of them age 18 to 49, watch the show. That's what it means, okay? So like, you know, Raw show this past Monday, uh, 0.59. So a little more than half a percent of all the people that have access to that channel watched Raw. This show, did this uh, basketball game, 3.08%. 3% of the entire population of the U.S. with access to that channel when the TV was on were watching that game. It's a lot of people. And a share is somewhat different, but... You know it's not a lot of people, unfortunately, for AEW, whose overall number for collision 
was up was in this i'm sure has got 100 percent. i shouldn't say 100 percent due to basketball but their women's number 18 to 49 was the lowest it has ever been a 0.04 a 0.04 now they were down overall 0.04 yeah, yeah so they were down anyway in 18 to 49 even though the overall number was up but that probably has got you know everything to do with basketball but still knee you, you never want to settle low in anything and that has not been putting on good performances but then again either is dynamite as we go into tonight three out of the last four weeks under eight hundred thousand, and very disappointing last week so we'll see uh, New Japan announced the full event schedule for G1 Climax 34. The G1 begins back-to-back -back nights in Osaka, July 20 and 21. Culminates two nights at Sumo Hall, August 17 and 18. There are 19 events in total in this year's G1, and they did not announce anything else. We don't know how many people, blocks, Couple participants... New Anything. Five new buildings. So that's Five new buildings. Thing. Yeah, but uh, they're all about this rural revitalization this year, man. Remember, this is not just a, an eating contest. This is part of Hiroshi Tanahashi's mantra as president of New Japan Pro Wrestling is getting it back to the world, starting again, the regrowth and the rebirth, and literally, in some cases, doing that in buildings and running cities that they've never gone to before. Of course, I understand rural revitalization. All right, let's look at some of the text messages here. Please say we have some. Oh, this person noted WWE Speed on X also took place today. This is their uh, high-speed show, which I presume is because you're only allowed to upload X number of minutes on X. Yes. And so they're, they've kept it to three-minute round or three-minute matches or whatever. And I'm pretty sure – I don't know this for sure because I just kind of saw it. I mean, someone will correct me quickly, but I think that Bronson Reed yeah. was in one of the high-speed matches. Is that true? Oh, he's a hell of a base. Yeah. Hey, look, if, Rick, if this is going to be a thing for Ricochet, cool. But I tell you what, how they've had Ricochet look in the past couple weeks on TV, that's that's how you're supposed to be building a guy up. That's what AEW should have did with the infantry. I, I know it's insane that they're doing this with Ricochet now, but when you give people like a couple of wins that seem to be out of context because there's no storyline attached, but it's just to show them off. Like, you do that a couple of times, then it pays off when, you know, he beats Ivar, and you can kind of showcase that a little bit more. I'd like to see where they go with him, but, you know, they've they've been terrible about doing anything with him in the past. Spurs says, Gunther will be Intercontinental Champion for 666 days on night one of WrestleMania. There's no way he is losing, right? Of course he's losing. I shouldn't say of course. But I'm I'm pretty sure that Sammy's beaten him. It's time. But I could be wrong. Hey, by the way, in an hour. Yeah. Two Pacific, five Eastern. Figure four daily with Lance Storm. And uh, we are going to do a contest Ooh. between Lance and I. We are going to do a WrestleMania night one and night two prediction contest. And there will be stakes. So make sure you watch it. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. There's John Rick Uchino at CapesideSeats.com. Congratulations on a great performance tonight. Just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, your new number one contender uh, in Wardlow and the words he had this week where he said he was coming for your spot. Yeah, uh, and, and much like everybody else in this in this entire roster. I mean, it's no it's no surprise Wardlow finds himself where he is. Obviously, a very domineering individual that has had tremendous success, admittedly even against me. But uh, right now, this is a very different version of myself. This is not one that is distracted by other championship titles. I'm the AEW world champion, and Wardlow will, look, will, will soon learn why that is. Hey, Joe, uh, DJ Danny Ocean, 101.9 KISS FM. Um, you mentioned Will Ospreay. We talked about Wardlow. Uh, is there any of these new up-and-coming guys or you got your eye that you want to get in the ring with yourself that you want to defend your title against? You know, once again, I, I refer back to championship protocol. I mean, they have to earn this spot. I mean, this is not me up here picking out dream matches, trying to be nice about this. No, this is me uh, supporting the integrity of the championship that only the best grapplers in the world will compete for. 
So, uh, you know, is, is there a, a laundry list of wrestlers I'd be more than happy to take on in the ring? Yeah, every single one of them. And you look up and down our roster, you tell me one person that isn't a dream match. I know what this company's capable of. I know about the competitors in this company, and I am more than happy to prove each and every one of them that they're second tier and they're just not on my level. Hey Joe, uh, Swerve made light of the uh, announcing in a poncho situation. Was mm -hmm. there ever a time in your life that you doubted that you would be back here where you are in this position? No, because obviously I was planning and taking the time to recover so that I could be back here at this capacity competing at this level. You know, far too, too many uh, uh, dumber athletes in this industry uh, don't take the time to heal. You know, don't bet on themselves and say, hey, listen, I'm going to step away from, from things a little bit and I'm going to come back um, uh, not 90%, uh, not 80%, 110%. And I took that time and I came back 110%. Now I'm AEW world champion. So, I mean, th this is just indicative of me understanding what I need to do to get things done. You know, I'm, I'm playing this on a very different level than everybody else. Everybody else out here just hoping they get their shot, hoping they're doing things. I'm planning dynasties. And I mean, it starts with, it starts with me. And that's not going to change anytime soon. I mean, they're they're playing chess. They're they're playing checkers. I'm out here playing chess. I mean, this is it's a totally different game, man. And uh, you know that, that that time. I mean, she, doing commentary and ponchos. I I'm still a millionaire. You know, I know what he's talking about. You know, so I mean, he he may not like that issue, but hey, that that guy on the poncho just whipped his ass tonight and is still world champion. So I mean, you, you tell me, you tell me who's running things around here. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And uh, one thing right here, we can talk more about this later. But well, this person says, is it, common for somewhat, is it somewhat common or common for pro wrestlers to have to pay for their own surgeries? If not, is Punk justified in his contempt for Tony Khan and AEW in that regard? So here's, here's how it works in AEW, and it is different from how it works in WWE. And he's not wrong about what he said happened. In WWE, you get hurt, they take care of everything. Hurt your knee, they're going to send you to James Andrews. Whole shebang, okay? That's what they did when he hurt his triceps. They take care of all that stuff, all right? In AW, what happens is you take care of all of it, and then you get reimbursed by AW. So... They're taking care of it, but you have to take care of it and then get your money back. So you want to get surgery? Got to find a surgeon. Expense it back. You want rehab? Got to find a place to do rehab. Expense it back. So it is a it is a different way of doing it. I would vastly prefer the way WWE does it. Well, I get hurt? Just tell me what to do and where to go and get my flight and everything like that. They They do it this way. So... But does, well, it's for another day, but do they have to come all out of pocket or are you turn in your billing in most cases, but you are coming out of pocket for certain things? It's I don't know any of that. I just know that whatever whatever they get done, they do get reimbursed for, but they have to expense it. So it's it's a different way of doing things. But it's, there, it's not a situation where if you get hurt in AW, you have to pay for everything and you're out on your own. Anyway, we're out of time. We'll talk about this more later. And it's a busy weekend. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.